welcome back to the channel. I am Mike Hess. I like films and TV shows. So today we're going to be looking at my DVD collection. Um, I'm not a Blu-ray guy. I don't really collect Blu-rays because I don't really feel like spending the money to get the Blu-ray. Like, and all that. So I just have DVDs pretty much. And, um, I think I'll do these every year and whatnot. Like, because every year I'll be getting more DVDs and shit. And I think I might do a uh, monthly haul video. And then I'll, uh... I actually do have more DVDs. I just haven't watched them. Like, um, I haven't seen Gladiator. I have that DVD. I have THX 138, which is uh, George Lucas's first feature film, I believe. I haven't watched that. So, yeah. I just had to close that tab out. Cause, uh, yeah, I was watching Jeremy Johns' actually vlog thing. I think I might start to do that. Like a monthly vlog thingy channel. So, anyways... Let's get right to it. First DVD. Fellowship of the Ring. So, honestly, if I'll be real, I like the Lord of the Rings better than Star Wars because Star Wars is like, first off, it's on a decline, but I've always like preferred certain Star I don't know. I think that this is better than Star Wars, but the, um, the third, I, I'm one of those people that thinks that Revenge of the Sith is like the best Star Wars movie. I love the prequels, if I'll be honest. I don't care what your opinion is. I love the prequels. I grew up with them, so fucking love them. I actually have two DVDs of this. I think this be, one of these came with like the Lego Lord of the Rings video game and shit. So yeah, I have like two of these. This one just doesn't have the case though. Or did this fall out? I don't know actually. Oh shit. <laughs> like, see, I have another one. It's just lost somewhere. In there. Oh shoot, look at that though. Look at that. It's like the ring. Language of Mortar. Okay. Next one. I wonder what the next one is. It's the Two Towers, the second Lord of the Ring film. I love how the um, DVD is like red and shit. Like that. I, that. That's awesome. I thoroughly like. I just like. That's great that they did that. And this is messed up. But uh, who cares? I'd rather. At least I have it. <laughs> you know, I don't really care the condition of it that much. I just care about having it. So yeah, let's take a look at the inside if you want. I really like what they um. I like how they did one tower right here, one tower right here. What's weird though is that this tower doesn't have the eye in it, which would make sense if they did that for the second movie. Because at the end, of the, that doesn't really make sense at all. Because you never see this without the eye. I don't know. Maybe that's a mistake. Maybe it was just. I think that's a mistake, if I'll be honest. But yeah. Two towers. Turn of the King. I think this is the best cover and um the best movie, of course, because it's the longest. And uh I don't know, it just feels so amazing. This movie this movie. I gotta read the books. Like I haven't I haven't read them in a while. And when I did I was like nine, so I skimmed through the entire book. So Yeah. Like, at the end, when, like, they leave for, like, the Undying Lands, like, when they leave, I just started crying. Because I was like, shit, this whole thing's over. I was like, damn. And the movie got me crying. And this is just a F3 film collection. It just has all three movies in it. This is, like, the first Lord of the Rings DVD I've ever gotten, actually. See, it just has all three. Really bland, but... It was good to have, it, it served its purpose when I got it, but when I wanted to get them individually, I was happy. Very happy. Three incredible films, one collection of World of Mall. Ah, uh, yes. So we got Hobbit. Always thought the Hobbit were really underrated. I love how Bobo Baggins, like, transformation, you know, his character, this is like a key example of character, like, development. Like in stories, because you get to see his character change from like this little bitch ass guy who just like wants his tea and his house clean and shit, but then he like decides to have fun and enjoy adventurous things in the world. And and I, I uh, this trilogy very spoke to me. I always thought the um third one I love because it's just one big action sequence. People say that oh it's not good because of the big action sequence I actually liked it from my point of view I think it's good as 
the best one is the uh, best Hobbit film is the first one, Unexpected Journey. But this is really a messed up thing. First, one, the best one is Unexpected Journey. Thoroughly love that one. Second one is um, Battle of the Five Armies because I love how it's just one big action scene and how it's just such a climactic film. Like everything, all the shit hits the fan in the third one, and I really liked it. And also the uh, Lord of the Rings setup thingy was done very well. And uh, yeah, Battle. And then the third one is the second one. Nice. The second one was a lot of talking, but then the ending was very good at the second Lord of the Rings one. So we're going to get to another franchise. A lot of people don't like the sequels. I think the sequels were pretty good, but uh, couldn't match the first two. That would be Pirates of the Caribbean. The first one was really good. A lot of people say it's the best one. I think it's the second best one. But... I do love the charisma of Johnny Depp and all the shit, like, all the little, like, adventures and crazy situations he gets in, and it, also I just love the sword fighting aspect to it, the swashbuckling, if you will, that's what I like about it, but I, I have two copies of this sequel, one of my, I think this is probably the best sequel ever made, Dead Man's Chest, the look, the story, everything is great of this film, like, it almost feels like a, a horror, like it has this weird horror aspect to it with the Kraken. You see right there, the Kraken, giant octopus, and the whole like, I've seen this so many times, and I just, the whole like treasure chest aspect is awesome. I loved Pirates of the Caribbean, and I think the sequels to them are fine, just none of them can match the second one. And uh, somebody drew on this, but whatever. Pirates of the Caribbean 3. I think this was fine, but I feel like the whole pirate politics thing wasn't really well done. I do, I did enjoy it, though. Did enjoy the, the mythology aspect of it. And I've seen this many times. And it's also really funny. And uh, I don't have the fourth one. I'm going to have to buy that, but I do have the fifth one, which I thought was... Um, that was the worst one, but it was okay. It was entertaining, at least. I just, it's the least rewatchable. The most rewatchable is the second one for me. But it did, does, the beginning's really good with the funny situation where, like, they pull the bank robbery thing. That was really funny. But then Javier Bardem is just weird in this. He was just over the, too over the top. You know, like Lex Luthor from Batman vs. Superman. He was kind of like that. Even though he did have a good backstory, I don't know. It wasn't what it. Favorite, some of my favorite movies that have come out recently are Kingsman and its sequel. The sequel is very underrated, but it was a little bit like long. Both of these movies are pretty long, but I don't know. I think both of them are fine, but the second one's a bit like. Not as good as this one, but yeah, yeah. I did, I did cry when uh, Merlin died. Rip Merlin, Rip Merlin. Can't wait for the King's Man. Maybe I should do a video on that. Maybe I should. Nah, I'm not really a trailer reaction type of guy. Okay, our next set. Okay. Get the Mad Max movies. This is the first Mad Max. Very thoroughly enjoy this. I think this is um I'd have to say the second best in the franchise. Uh I think this is criminally underrated. I loved how just it was like it's so much visual, and it's just amazing. Just It's just fun. It's very fun. And shit, it's short. It's fun and short, you know? But it also manages to be serious and have really just crazy moments with, for our characters. And you really just get to see, like, how fucked up he gets after, like, seeing all this really bad shit happening to his family. 
I think this is second because you can't like I don't know I just think it's underrated I think the road warrior very good film but I don't know I think Mad Max Fury Road's number one road warriors number three and first Mad Max number one beyond Thunderdome is the fourth one because it just had less car action while it was the Thunderdome aspect was really cool but I feel like it should have just been more like on the run. You know. I did like how they went more into like the like how how the world became like not how, but like they went more into the aspect of the nuclear war that happened, visiting old places that have been nuked. This is the uh thing. The title seek the title card on this is horrendous though. It just looks so like shitty. But the uh, movie itself is uh, fantastic, and it's probably the best sequel ever made, next to um, Dead Man's Chest. And, uh, yeah, I burped. Oopsie. Oopsie daisy. And, uh, it's really well acted. It's a fast movie for being two hours, just on the run from Morton Joe. Morton Joe's a really good bad guy, because honestly, like... I don't know if, like, I don't know if this is, like, too many people said this, but it is realistic, the movie and shit, so. One of my, I love disaster movies. I have a, they're my guilty pleasure, and 2012 is my favorite disaster movie. I honestly love San Andreas. It's stupid, and Dwayne the Rock Johnson acts the same way every goddamn thing he's in. He, he doesn't know how to act. He just knows how to be Dwayne Johnson. And, uh, this, he wasn't in this, but I did like the story behind it. I did like Willie Harrelson's part of it. He was this crazy little, oh my god, look at him. Focus on that, it's not gonna focus. Yeah, look at him. <laughs> Willie Harrelson, crazy guy who predicts the end of the world and shit. But, yeah, he's, a. Uh, this is a fun movie. Like, I just, it's just one of, like, if you wanted to just see somebody just tear up the world and just to see the world just go like complete nuts, like with barely much explanation, it's awesome. And the ending's pretty like, kind of like, uh, why are you all of a sudden, why is the world all of a sudden now it's ending? Like, why is everything fine? Like, you know, it, the ending's stupid, but it still was a fun movie. It's just fun to see shit just get messed up. For some reason, I don't have the case for this movie, but I'm gonna buy another version, but. 300 and its sequel are like 300 is really good but i think the sequel is very good but very well made sequel is criminally underrated it's one of the best sequels worst harry potter movie it was good but i almost be i love the fourth harry potter movie and the third one i love the i love like the first five that first four were really tough you know I love, I don't know, this just didn't seem like a, I like how, like, all, all Harry Potter movies are, like, kind of the same and set in high school, but then, like, the, the last one is kind of like, uh, Watchmen, one of the best superhero movies ever made, Zack Snyder is a criminally underrated director, but I'm not one of those Zack Snyder files who think that Batman vs. Superman was the best movie ever made, yeah, Batman vs. Superman was shit, but, Zack Snyder is a great director, and he's directed many great movies, and, uh, he's directed a very, a lot of great movies, like Man of Steel is criminally underrated, 300 criminally underrated, um, this is criminally underrated, I'm excited to see more work from, from him, except, he is making a new zombie movie that's coming out, which is kind of stupid, because who wants to see another zombie movie, but I mean, I'm still gonna see it, because I'm gonna see, like, Zack, Mo Zack Snyder crazy colors, and, uh, crazy, like, Slow motion, fast motion, fighting. Shit. So I'm kind of hyped for that. It's like called Army of the Dead. Dave Bautista from Isn't It? From Guardians of the Galaxy. There we go. Dark Knight. What do I need to say? Best, best Batman movie, honestly. Just what I need to say. Okay, haven't seen this in a while. Eh. A lot of people really like it. I don't know. Well, isn't really this was pretty good the relationship of batman and the joker and really like it that was pretty good well done but uh when you're you know, if you're a kid you'll really like this and i'm definitely selling this honestly
Because why would I watch that again? I'm a fucking 16 year old who wants to see like crazy, violent, rated art movies. I don't really need that in my collection. Jaws. Movie you gotta watch in the summer. What else am I gonna say? Okay. Men in Black 2. Very eh. 6 out of 10, honestly. Like, it's not that good. Like, I do like the creatures and shit, but I always thought the third one was very good. Third one was emotional, but it was also really funny with the uh, guy that could predict the future. Weird shit in his head, yeah. I haven't seen this in a while. But, uh, yeah, it's really good. The final cut one. I hate the one with the uh, narration. Narration was shitty. I don't know if this is the one with the narration. Nah, this isn't. There's like 20 fucking Blade Runners. It's funny. Okay. This is gonna... Everybody's gonna hate me for this, but... Psycho. Well shot, well done. But, uh... The amount of talk that it's had before I saw it made the whole movie ruined. Because, like, there was no reveal, like... A bunch of websites have just been like, oh, yeah, the end, like, the ending, and explain, like, everybody just spoiled the ending for me. It's like how everybody knows Luke's his father. Luke, I mean, Darth Vader is Luke's father. It's kind of like that, how the ending, like, it just wasn't, didn't do it for me. Like, I already knew it was going to happen in every part of the movie. And I don't really recommend this, honestly. Unless you just want to say that you've seen Psycho. I haven't seen any other Alfred Hitchcock movies, but, like... Uh, this one was like, oh, whatever. Looks good, but good for its time, I guess. It's... So this is a Sansa, Lambs, and Hector, and Hannibal. Well, I haven't seen Hannibal, but I like Silence of the, of the Lambs. It's a really whack movie. Reminds me of Mine Mind Hunter, reminds me of that. Mindhunter is a great show about delving into serial killers' minds and also solving crimes. I'll have a review. I have a review up, so you should check that out if you want. And, uh, yeah. I'd like to check out Hannibal, though. That'd be tough. Jay Foster did a great Ant movie. So. Goodfellas. Thoroughly entertaining. I do watch... Even though this is really good, I have to say that I do watch Casino more than this. I gotta get Casino on DVD, but Casino is just... Um, it's a, it's like Goodfellas on crack cocaine. It's just like so much of Joe Pesci just beating up people for money, but it also does have a good story. But Goodfellas is a more well done movie, but I do like watching Casino over and over again because of how crazy it is and how long it is. Casino should have been like a mini series on cable. That's how long it is. It's like a three, literally three hour movie, but like it's worth it. But like this one is mo most well done. But, uh, I haven't seen this. I, I, I've seen this in like a, I haven't seen this in a year, but it's more well done than Casino. Like I like this more than Casino, but I watched Casino more. I gotta watch this again though. Best mob movie ever. Yeah, I think it is. I mean, I really like The Godfather. Godfather Two was really good, but I don't know. Uh, I have a bunch of um, Tarantino films in my Amazon cart, but. I have a Reservoir Dogs special edition. Came out in 2002. Found it at a thrift shop. Very great film. I think I might do a review of all like Tarantino films, honestly. Like, it's like very good movies. Um, yeah. Reservoir Dogs. Basically about crime, like a, a bank robbing and shit. So. Some dog millionaire. That's what came in one of those dollar store packs where you like don't get a case. Great movie. I love how just like the characters. Like, I love the characters in this, and it's just like a slice of life. Like you just get to see like how each character ends up in India and or what they do in India and how like travel and when they're kids and when they're teens and it's just like yeah, it's one of those movies that, like. At the end of the movie, you look back at it like an old like an old man. You're like back in my day, and uh, yeah, this is like the three pack thing. I still gotta buy the individual disc for this Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown, Reservoir Dogs, but uh, this is like 
first time watching a Tarantino thing, I was at Best Buy and like I got this for like five bucks, and I because I, I just the hype of Tarantino and I checked it out. It was like a year and a half ago or something. Ever since then, I've seen like almost all his movies. I haven't seen a, a Death Proof yet. I just watched Django two nights ago, so expect a video on him soon. Rushmore, I'm doing a video on this for show. Sure. It's like a, I did do a video essay on it because like this movie is like speaks to me. It's like tenth grader. He's like has all these obsessions with like clubs and stuff at school and then he ends up like becoming obsessed with like a teacher and stuff i didn't i didn't get obsessed with teacher but like he, the fact that he's always like obsessed with shit and it's like a quirky wes anderson type thingy and uh yeah and bill murray's in it bill murray's a god so it's confusing only dynamite i have two vote for pedro shirts from this film so yeah i love only dynamite i've actually seen interview with the actors in philly and uh i, I it was like a whole q a thing and we watched the movie with them it was really tough and um yeah really nerdy nice film that speaks to me and shit and just has funny moments and i've rewatched it like every year and uh it's just kids doing fun stuff and i really dig it really dig it I'm gonna go a bit more fast now. Spy Kids 2. Over the top movie made by Robert Rodriguez, but it's also like kitty in a way, and I think it's pretty fun to watch, honestly. Uh, this movie is crazy. It's just like insane. Like, Natural Born Killers isn't weird. Like, all the weird visuals and stuff. Like, it's just psychedelic, the movie, I guess you could say. But, for some reason, Quentin Tarantino disowned this movie because, like, it didn't stay true to his script. But I thought it was actually pretty good. I think he didn't like how the director made it. Chocolat. My mom's favorite movie. It's okay. It's just like a rom-com, but it is it has have its own special thing and it makes you want to eat chocolate, so whatever. And uh, I'm making a pile. Rudy. Very inspirational movie. Uh they were feeling it down that you can't do anything, watch this because it's about like just you know, following your dreams and whatnot. And it's played by Samwise Gamgee from Lord of the Rings, so it's cool to see his face again. And John Favreau from uh, Iron Man's in it. Upwork Orange. Good Stanley Kubrick movie, but it's a bit like over the top. Like, it's not for everybody. You will like. It's really just something good to look at, but the story's pretty good. Hey. It's a bit long. I don't know. The story was weird, but. It's something that you really gotta analyze. It's not it's for simple. The movie's not for simple things. All four movies, great. Full Metal Jacket's probably Stanley Kubrick's best movie. I think it's better than 2001. Full Metal Jacket, I just love it. it everybody's like, it's what war... Like the, it's the... It's People say that, like, Full Metal Jacket is, like, really accurate to work because it shows, like, young boys when they're young and going into, like, the army and shit and becoming killers and then all the sad stuff that happens when you're in war. Like, everybody, like, Full Metal Jacket's really good. I gotta get its own, my own copy of that. For, for real. Two. Better than the new Star Wars, Spider Man movies. Sp bleh, Spider Man. Spider -Man, I think the old Raimi ones are better. More, more well done stories. And um, the character of Toby. Like, Toby. Like, how he doesn't have a lot of money and how he, like. Why he does what he does. And, like, the characters have more depth. Like, but, like, in Spider Man Far From Home, it's like everybody just gets what they want. And. Oh, I get the Stark tech. Like, he's such, like, a, ri like, a rich kid. He has all this shit. And it's not really thoroughly explained how he has all that shit. Like, Spider-Man is kind of, like, just a version of Iron Man. Because he has a one. It's all, like, technical-based in the new Spider-Man. But, like, the old ones were down to earth. Like, I feel you. And uh, this is the extended cut. Spider-Man 2.1. Very good. One of the best superhero movies. 
more can I say? Give it a watch. I would like to make a video on why I'm getting sick and tired of superhero uh, movies and how I, what movies I'd like to see come out more and uh, what movies I'm anticipating. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. X-Men Origins Wolverine. Fun, but shitty writ shittily written. The opening montage, I remember I watched like a review. It was like Chris Duckman's Hilariosity review of this. And he said the opening montage where they're like, Wolverine and Sabretooth are in all all like wars like a montage of how they're like because you know they live forever so they've been in all the, all the wars that should have been a whole movie yeah, that would have been great like but if you saw like him in like the Civil War then you saw him like yeah, World War One, then World War Two, then like and all like the friends he's made and shit and how his brother keep going like it could have been really well done but they just decided to do some really weird plot with like Gambit and Weapon X and all this sh shit and Shut up, Deadpool thing. Like, it was horrible, like, the ending of Deadpool. Jesus. It should have been... It should have... It, could, it had potential. Batman Begins, the whole trilogy of this gives me chills on how amazing it is. That's really all I can say about Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy. Yeah, I've been on, like, one of these Stanley Kubrick things. I do like how this one has Hal in front. But Eyes Wide Shut is this insane movie, and uh, there's a lot of cool conspiracy theories about it. Barry Lyndon, I've only seen half of it. But the first half I saw was thoroughly great. And the cinematography is wow. And the zoomed in shots that he does is like shit. Stanley Kubrick knows what he's doing. Very whack but funny movie. You had to have the right mind to watch this. Not everybody can see this. And like Keith Steinfeld is a really great actor. And the story behind this and how like it has like themes of the. It has certain themes of like. Like, I don't know, like, I, I, it's, this is probably a whole video essay on it, but, like, it has, like, cool themes of, like, the working man and stuff, and trying to make money, and all that. It, it has its own cool little niche. This is an epic, but it's really long. I had to be in the right mood to watch this, because it is an epic movie. And, uh, some parts are unsatisfying, but, uh, it's alright. It's pretty good. It's good for its time. Like, from the look right here, it looks like some big action movie, but it's really not. There's not that much action to it, but it does have a good story. Though. It's all, like, World War I and shit. It's pretty good, but it's, like... It's more about the visuals with that film. They're like, all these old movies, everybody's, like, old scholars are, like, great film, great film. It's the cinematography, the way it looks. Like, shut up, like... Everybody like Citizen Grey and Kane is the best movie. When really, it's just like, just how it looks. And Psycho, it's just how it looks and how the uh, shower scene was shot. Like, it's all about how it looks. It's nothing about the story. Those are all just experimental shit. And that's why all movies back then were like based off of books. Because they didn't know how to write good stories. And the books that they were based off of weren't even that good. But except for Stanley Kubrick. Because even though all these movies are based off of books, they're still pretty tough movies. Like, you know, Full Metal Jack is based off of book. But that book was like, from somebody from Vietnam, so like, you know, it makes sense. Iron Man, great movie. I just love like how f it's a f it's like an action comedy. It's a thoroughly good action comedy, and it also started the fucking Marvel universe. So, <whistles> bottle rocket. I don't know what to say. I gotta do a video essay on this, but this is like amazing. Like the the way it just looks and everything about this movie. It's just. Not the way it looks, but, like, the characters are, like, really, like, funny. and It's all, like, Wes Anderson quirkiness and awesome moments for the characters. It's all character-based. It's less, like, superficial. It's less, like, high-octane action thing. It's just, like, a fun a movie with fun moments for our characters. And it's, uh, it's a touching movie. It's a good touching movie. Fantastic Mr. Fox, one of my favorite movies. It's this well done, artistic, awesome, funny, hilarious Fox stop motion movie that's just well done. One of the most underrated trilogies. But uh, it's more, these are dumb movies, but they're fun. But they're not like intelligent. But um, Mexico trilogy, El Mariachi. 
made for seven, made by Robert Rodriguez and Desperado, a fun action. Steve Buscemi's in that one. Steve Buscemi, you must watch it if Steve Buscemi is in the movie. Because Steve Buscemi is a god. Once Upon a Time in Mexico, very fun. One of the first movies shot on digital, which is really interesting. I'm shooting on digital right now. I'm shooting on my freaking phone right now. But um, thoroughly enjoying Trilogy. Um, I don't know why. It would have been cool if the main actor from the first one was in the second movies, but I guess not. We just have to recast it with a more famous actor. Like, that's stupid. Honestly. There is good times to recast. It's just Robert Pattinson. Because Ben Affleck was a really shitty Batman, but... You know what I'm saying? Upgrade. Upgrade. Oh my god. This movie is fantastic. It's like... This guy's girlfriend, like, uh, dies. And then he, um... Ends up getting paralyzed from the attack on his girlfriend that happened. And, um... He ends up getting given this thing that makes him have this, like... That goes into, like, his spine and re-engineers him, and this robot helps him out. And then he ends up using this robot's powers that's inside of him and to uh, get revenge and shit. And he ends up going to this dark path. And it's a really dark movie with the twisted, dark ending. And uh, people are like, it's like a Twilight episode, like, about the effects of technology. I don't know. I haven't even seen a Twilight episode. I don't feel like, feel like watching it. I hate shows from the 60s or, like, black and white. I don't care for it. But uh, I thoroughly... I really like this movie. Really liked. It. I think I might do a video essay on it, or do like a live. I don't know. That's a movie I want to make live. Think about born movies, overrated. Pretty good. More about the. It's all I don't know. Nothing really stuck out with me. Those movies. It was like, oh yeah, it's great action movie. Let's get some trophy. Good character. Like, I don't really care. To be honest. Tusk movie about bullying and the and uh, karma, very good movie and it's funny because written by Kevin James who did um Clarks and whatnot, a bunch of other funny shit, very very good one. Blindside, very uh touching, inspiring movie about like you know football and getting success after being a very homeless person coming from bad areas. It's like definitely this whole movie's rap song, if I'll be honest, but a good rap song. I mean, it's almost space Odyssey. Very good film, not Stanley Kubrick's best, but Interstellar is a very good version of it. It's the better version of this movie. Interstellar is the most underrated movie of all time, and it's my better than. It's the best Christopher Nolan movie. It's better than The Dark Knight. I don't care what you say. It's amazing. But uh, yeah, that wraps it up. That is my DVD collection as of August 2019. I will do one next year, August 2020, most likely, and I'll do. Uh, I'll do haul videos every month, like, after, at the end of every month, I'll be like, oh, what's the new DVD I got? So, yeah, thanks for watching, and, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.